Tears of anger and pain spilled over in a Port Hardy today as victims of residential schools spoke out. Their emotional statements were made to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which came to Vancouver Island for the first time. Dean Stoltz reports. They would hurt me when she wasn't around. Their stories may vary, but they're all very painful and personal ones. Stories and accounts of what happened to them when they were taken from their families when they were younger and sent to Indian residential schools. Like Barbara Johnson, who was sent to St. Michael's Residential School at Alert Bay in the late 60s. I remember going up the stairs and then through the front, in the front doors. And the sound of those doors closing. You know, haunts me. Between the 1870s and 1996, there were 130 residential schools across Canada. 150,000 First Nations children forbidden to speak their language and practice their culture. Many have or will receive financial compensation, but this Truth and Reconciliation Commission is about allowing them to tell their stories. Stories of um, the straps and, and the physical violence, very common themes as well, and sexual violence. We've heard all of these things before. They also tell stories of how the cycle of abuse continued as adults. I was a bit like the way I was treated. When our children came home, I treated them the same way I was treated. Many, many of my people are afraid to talk about what happened to them. And I, I work with many of our people, and they're still hurting very badly. We must begin to tell our story. We must begin to make people understand that these things happened to us. And we know there is people that will listen now today. Their statements go on permanent record, but their healing could be much more fleeting. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission hearings move to Campbell River on Thursday.